Hi, everybody. Shana Tova. We're going to do a last minute little party. Yeah. <laughs> Music, Torah, fun things. Here, come over here. You're in the side, this side. Um, we had uh, our kids home for summer, so we had no time for lives or anything. So um, if anyone's here, let us know what's your name and where you're from. And we're now going to start with a song about Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> Shoshana, let me know if you're celebrating. Where are you going? Um, any non-Jews out there? Some of you guys are celebrating for the first time because it's actually the birthday of humankind, which is so exciting. So I kind of don't really know why non-Jews don't celebrate like all the time. Do you know why? <laughs> like Rosh Hashanah, like why isn't it like like people that are no hides? If you are out there, let me know if you celebrate and what you do. Right? Why don't you think it's I don't know much it's about a good this. Question, but there is a few uh, there are a few holidays are coming up that that uh, that the non-Jewish world actually celebrates quite a bit with us. One of them is Sukkot, uh-huh. which uh, much of the of the non-Jewish world actually comes to celebrate with us in uh, in Jerusalem. And then we have also coming up afterwards in uh, the seventeenth of Cheshvan, which is the next month. Uh-huh. We have uh, the birthday. Noahide. <laughs> We have the Noahide <laughs> holiday of oh, no. the day that the, that the Ark of Noah landed on the mountains of Ararat. Wow, it's exciting. Do you Hi. Guys, uh, hey, everybody, Sylvia and beautiful. How are you guys doing, Las Vegas? Are you in Israel? Where, where are you, Sylvia? I forgot. Somewhere somewhere over the rainbow. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, so we wanted to take to Va. Yeah, we wanted to use the opportunity to play everybody and uh, just to that we should all have, we, we have a saying that the year that's passing and all its curses, even though it ha- if it had blessings, that all the curses will be gone. Amen, and we'll amen. start a year with just blessings, moving from what was harsh into what was good. And that's amen, a blessing amen. we should give everybody. <laughs> yes. And look, I did. Yes, Sylvia's from, yeah, the, Netherlands. Sylvia's from the Netherlands. For, oh, yeah, that's right. I said, like, all my friends come from the Netherlands here, right? All our best friends. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, so I made a Rosh Hashanah book here, and I want to go over a couple things that we do in Rosh Hashanah. Let me know if you guys have any questions about Rosh Hashanah. Hey, Judy from Texas. Shalom. I was there once for a. Uh, in Austin when I was like 15 years old. It was so much fun. I'm from California and it reminded me of California. Hello, Belgium lady. How are you doing? We also have friends here from Belgium and Israel, which is great. Okay, so real fast to find it. <laughs> here it is. No, wait. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so I made a little book about Rosh Hashanah and one of the pages... It has what we actually do on Rosh Hashanah, the mitzvahs that God wants us to do on Rosh Hashanah. Now, did you guys know that Rosh Hashanah is called Yom HaTru? Ah. True, uh, which means the day Day of of the... That's what it's actually called. But it's funny because Shabbat. So can we blow a shofar on Shabbat? No, actually, you can't. So what are we going to do? The sages decreed that we will not blow the shofar on Shabbat. Because there was a uh, fear that somebody might come to fix the shofar or take it to a place. Well, we don't blow. To... We don't blow musical instrument. We don't play musical instruments on Shabbat. Right. So but... the next day on Rosh Hashanah, the second day, that's when we will be blowing the shofar. Right. This year, the first year of Rosh Hashanah being tomorrow night is already Shabbat. And fun so... fact: uh, Rosh Hashanah is two days. So, so maybe God did that where we can't blow the shofar on Shabbat, but we can the next day. 
Just one second. Okay, um, okay, I'm trying to find something. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry, just one second. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking at something right here, trying to find. See, this is why I didn't want to come on like this. That's, really nice. That's okay. So You're almost there. We're the, passing the I recipes. Don't, I, don't, I don't even know what I'm doing. No, I was looking for. That's okay. The I mean, questions, the fun questions. Go for it. Go for it. Go I don't. I don't know where they are. I have to try. To Just somewhere towards the end. Okay. Okay. There we okay, go. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. So there's a lot of things we think about on um, Rosh Hashanah. It's like a birthday. I remember when I started getting older, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, the birthdays are not really like parties." Like, what am I doing in my life? <laughs> Does it matter? Which are good things to think about on your birthday in the new year. Now, a lot of people say uh, Rosh Hashanah is not uh, in the new year. It's on Pesach, which uh, the Pesach, the seventh month. It, oh, sorry. The first month is Pesach. Wait, the seventh month, right? No, no, no. The first month is Pesach, and we're in the seventh month right now. So people right. are like, it's That's not Rosh Hashanah. Right. right. It's Pesach. But they have to understand, let's say like the the whole world, right? You celebrate New Year's and you also celebrate your birthday. Your birthday is also a new year, right? So <laughs> we're celebrating our birthday, which to me feels like it's a Shana Tova, right? Right. <laughs> so actually, when you look at it, Pesach is the birthday specifically of the Jewish nation. And that's why it's also considered a Rosh Hashanah beginning of the year. And then Rosh Hashanah itself is the birth of mankind. And that is like, so it's like, um, and we're celebrating actually together with the world on, on Rosh Hashanah. Right, right. we, we, we believe that that when we're praying those special prayers of Rosh Hashanah, sounding the shofar, we basically get, we're being judged by God, all of us. First of all, uh, first of all, the Jews are being judged, and then we're like, we're praying for the entire world to be judged mm -hmm. favorably, mm -hmm. because the whole world is, is judged on mm -hmm. that day. Whether uh, whether they would get blessing or curse, and, and hopefully just uh, just continue to right. right. Uh, so there were seven days of creation, right? And so Rosh Hashanah is the sixth day of creation, and the seventh day is Shabbat. <laughs> right, and the sixth day of creation was the creation of mankind. That's when God created. So the man. sixth day. So the first day, what was created? God, what did God create? The first light. day. Yeah, Does anybody light. know out there? <laughs> Shalom from Belgium. So first day there was light. Second day on earth. Amazing. Yeah, the plants. Okay, the plants and then the birds and then anyway. Birds and fish and then really animals and then, the, and then okay. the, <laughs> so, so and the, the sixth stars. day is is man. So that's us. Okay, so that's what we're celebrating on Rosh Hashanah. And five days ago or six days ago, it was the creation of the world. Now my question is, why don't we celebrate that? <laughs> Oh, Why don't we question. celebrate the creation of the world on the first day when God created well, light? And anyway, let me know if anyone's here because uh, our internet's really bad. We're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> you guys are typing that we stop. So just let me know how you guys are doing. Um, yeah, why Why do you guys think that we don't celebrate? Adam was born on this day. Adam and Eve were born on this day. Why don't we celebrate the day that the world was created? Why do we celebrate men? Why don't we celebrate the day that animals were created? Because everyone loves animals and vegan people out there, right? There is such a day, by the way. Right, there is, yeah. On the beginning of the month of the Lul. Right, right. right. They, right. We have a we have a question of like what would supposedly like uh, the, the animal birthday. Right, but, right, um, right. I heard this. We we were in potential existence in the creation of the world, but none of us was there really. The only time we were right. like we were fully here. For mm. the first time, was with the creation of was the Adam and Chava. Seventh, that was right, like right, right, we right. can say, "Oh, okay, here we are. <laughs> now we can talk. Now we can have a birth. Now we can uh, celebrate." Right. Uh, well, before, well, we're yeah. we were called um, Ad Adam, right? Which means Adama, which means coming from the earth. So we were maybe here during all creation, and then finally we came to life on the sixth day. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but the word Adam, like I said, means means earth. So, so what's this thing? Everyone's kind of getting connected to Earth now, and the and the environment and gardening, right? Because that's actually who we are. Maybe if we connect to soil and Adama, which is who we are, we could actually connect to ourselves. So I think it's very important. I started gardening, right? <laughs> trying to like put a hundred seeds, and one maybe comes up, okay? And I'm trying to do that because I'm trying to be connected to myself because we can actually like um, meditate 
out of our head for a second and be in the Adama, be in ourselves also. So maybe that's why the creation. And then the main thing for creation maybe is for human beings, not for animals, not for soil, not for flowers, but for us. Hi, Mary. Thank you. Yeah, we're doing good. We're up kind of late and we're like, oh, we should maybe do a little Shana Tova. Hello to everybody. Yeah. I hope you're doing well. Where are you in America again? I think you're in like New Mexico, Arizona area. Somewhere really hot. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyway, what? So, what? Sh okay. What do Shana Tova song? to do Oklahoma usually, but she's on vacation in Wyoming. Oh my goodness. That's like mountains and stuff going out over there, right? <laughs> one of the things that's the one of the most beautiful traditions we also mentioned it in several movies is uh, on Rosh Hashanah is to eat different types of what's called simanim, signs, uh, fruit, and that, have, that can be connected to some sort of blessing. So we've done this in several times. I encourage you also, yeah, totally whether right. you whether you observe uh, Rosh Hashanah or don't observe or want to have a little bit of taste of it, to take some fruit and say something that has to do with it or its name. We have neighbors that, for example, will take um, a cucumber and say something like, may this year be a cue for all our enemies to disappear. For example, I mean, it's cue. like a cue, cucumber. Cucumber, oh my God, that's or like maybe, a dad joke. Wait, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not really funny. Right, right, right. Right? Or <laughs> they'll eat a potato and say, may we what not is? be couch potatoes this year. I mean, yes. our grandparents' couch. This couch is older than me. Yeah. Elam uh, <laughs> hey, was like born on this raised, couch. She was like a tiny, raised. tiny baby. And now we have it, which is right. a blessing. Hello, Trisha Shinatova. You've been eating a lot of pineapple. Oh my gosh, send some over here. That sounds so great. We have which is the Margate Drusam. That is the best food in the world. And pineapples, every time we go there, we have to get a pineapple, but we're like two hours away. So we have to drive really far. <laughs> but, it, okay, enjoy for us. I wonder if there's a there's a, a blessing or a, a joke we can say for Rosh Hashanah for pineapple. Pineapple, yeah, I was Let's just thinking. Pineapple. Well, in Hebrew, pineapple is ananas. Ananas, right, ananas. right, 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 right. And it, it's... Uh, um, what, it's like sounds a little bit like Ness, Ness. which is a miracle. A miracle. Maybe right, 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 we, right, right. this year will be full of Nisim. Amen, amen. Full of miracles. Miracles. Ananas. Full of mal miracles. Ananas. Yeah. Hanukkah I guess that's the only association I have with. Right, right, right. <laughs> Leah's mother, by the way, loves pineapple. Right, right. So we get. Time for yeah, them. we've had the tradition <laughs> of putting a pineapple on the Shabbat table and taking a picture for mom, right? Yeah. Um, okay, what's the next question? Okay, so the questions, some questions I have for the Rosh Hashanah. Okay, what are your hopes and dreams for the new year? Now, you don't say too much personal, but you can maybe say it for the world if you want. Hopes and dreams. Oh, also Ananas and Dutch, yeah. Might oh, be, interesting. Dutch. It might be uh, adopted in Hebrew. It it's, a rel it's a relatively modern uh, word, I would say. Ananas. Yeah, ananas. Wow, interesting. Amazing. Interesting. What's your hope and dream for the world for the upcoming year? Because the world is crazy, right? But maybe, I mean, it's crazy because it's going somewhere, okay? It's not crazy because it's crazy. It's crazy because there's a process that needs to happen 
through the hard times, the crazy times, what is going on, that means something good is happening. If something's boring or something's really good all the time, nothing's really going to happen. So something really big is going to happen. Again, I know a lot of people are suffering. A lot of people don't know what's going on. A lot of people think there's, you know, the world's coming to an end and, and environmental things are going on, all these things. But the main thing is us, you know, the main thing is inside of us. People think like, no, the environment is going crazy. Well, guess what? They're only going crazy because we are, we are the, we're celebrating Rosh Hashanah as people, right? We're not celebrating, um, something else so we affect the whole world so we affect the environment we affect our neighborhood our neighbors our friends our husband our, um, our plants right we affect everything so i pray that this year we will be good inside somehow we can center ourselves be happy find things that make us happy be connected to the earth be connected to the adama which is soil so we can i'm an eve Adam and Hava, which is soil coming from the earth. Beautiful. Uh, Yosefine, hey, shalom, shana tova. We're doing this random thing. It's kind of awkward, but we're just talking. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. We want to talk about a hot like, thing. Do, 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 do. My son so, has some his little trumpet thing, right? Oh, yeah, my son has a trumpet. You guys are also comments if you have any uh, blessings for the new year. And also, if you yeah. have any perspectives you want to share, I will say, show one more thing about what you said. It was right. very beautiful. Um, we have a saying in Hebrew from uh, from one of our one of our ancient sages named. Uh, wait a second. Nach, not Nachman, Menachem, Menachem, Menachem Ish Gamzu. Oh, Why was he called okay. Gamzu? Gamzu Letova, which means in English that this is. All or the best. So the saying right. that has become classical is that maybe things, maybe certain thing. You can't say that everything is good in right, this right world, now, right, but right. it is for the best. Right, it's for the meaning good, right. we don't always understand it how God runs the world and why there should be bad things and harsh things as well. Right. But somehow, it's all going to turn out to be for the best. And if you have right. that, if you keep feeding yourself that thought, if you can really. And you can see how you can you can you can slowly see, especially when you look at things from the past, how things are right. the best. Sometimes God shows you things that you went through that are really hard, and you went through it, and oh my gosh, it was for that. I want to you give know. an example, just a real oh, life, life example. I do it really fast, you really, do. really, really fast. You. Just because it was the nine eleven the other day, may every soul rest in peace and uh, have fly high in heaven. And and, hair, and, uh, the, and the enemies crushed. Amen. We say enemies crush a thousand times in Rosh Hashanah because it's true. There's evil and there's good in this world. But anyway, so there's this there's a story of, of some man who um, had to hire a really good lawyer. Okay, and his best friend cousin was a lawyer, and uh, and 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 this this man hired someone and it wasn't the cousin and the cousin was so upset right i was the perfect person for this job and my cousin no i needed a job and he didn't hire me so for 20 years this guy was so upset with his cousin he barely talked to him okay and then what happened so it was a he worked at this big firm the cousin had a big firm okay and then unfortunately on 9 11 um the whole office did not make it and so it was, but the man whose life was saved at the job that he thought he should get was like, oh my gosh. So again, we really don't know what God has in store for us. If he wants to save our life, if he doesn't, if the hard thing we're going through right now is actually the birthing process for us to give birth to ourselves really, right? We're always struggling to, to, be positive and be happy and stuff like that. So every hardship we're going through is working our muscle to be who we're supposed to be. So, hey, is, is, is JLB, let me know your name. I sometimes forget. All I see is some things. <laughs> um, also, Rosh Hashanah, right? What's Rosh in Hebrew? A head. Head. <laughs> 
So, so for the I head, yeah, 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 Rosh. So, so it's very important on Rosh Hashanah, these two day, days tomorrow and the next day, that we think good thoughts in our head because that could be a seed for the whole year to think good thoughts because everything starts in here, right, guys? So, Bazar Hashem, which means God, God willing. So, to start with a good year, we have some jokes that I made. They're kind of like dad jokes a little bit <laughs> for the new year. So, let's see it. Okay, okay, okay. What's one joke on here? Okay, Elam, question. Why are Jews so superstitious? Why are you? No, no, no. What? No, no, no. Let me say this again. Oh, yeah, Gary and Lana. That's what I thought. Sorry. I, <laughs> I hope you guys are doing well. We wanted to talk to you guys. We had to go to sleep early, and then we got up to do this, which is a little crazy. Um, what does it say? No, the question is, are we Jews superstitious? And then, and then you say, no, no. that would bring us bad luck. Uh, That's the joke. Uh, <laughs> okay, so another cute. joke. What's a cheerleader's favorite fruit? Does anybody know? These are Rosh Hashanah jokes, she okay? Cheerleader's favorite fruit? Right, right, right. Palm, palm. Palm, pomegranate. Granite. That's right, Trisha. <laughs> is that crazy? Lana and Gary, how are you guys doing today? Hope you guys are doing okay. Um, What's another joke? Right. Why do beets always win? Beets, beets, you a little lower you put Sorry. beets is another food we eat on Rosh Hashanah. So, why do beets always win? Because nobody can beat it. That's right. Or something like, they're unbeatable. <laughs> now, select beets, right? But don't tell them all the jokes. Don't spoil well, That's okay. It's okay. It's, it's only one page. <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. I'm trying to read my screen. I can't really read it. <laughs> okay. 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 This is one more. Why were Josh and Rachel sitting on a palm tree? They were on a date. They were on a date. That's uh, right. That's right. Uh, date uh, is another is another food we do. Now, why do we eat? Why dates? do we? Why do we? Why do we? Eat, why do we eat or see a fish head on the Rosh Hashanah table? What's I don't. I don't know. I think that's the weirdest thing. Oh, the weird Even if you say something, right I don't right. understand it. Animals' heads or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do we look at a fish heads on Rosh Hashanah? Right. So besides the fact that it's called Rosh Hashanah, which oh, is Rosh. the head of the year, right, right, and that's, right. we have the head of the fish, there's supposedly something with the fish that they they multiply, they multiply almost endlessly. They multiply, so and we, they're and they're modest because you can't really see them; they're under the water. Right. Okay. So we want to be both the head and also for that to be fruitful, because you can oh. also be you can also be at the head of okay. uh, of something that's oh. not good, right? Oh right, 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 head right, of, right. Head of something that's not heading into anywhere, so to speak. Good fruitful things yeah like why didn't god call it like uh like hadash shana hadash you know what i mean like hug he called it we call we call it rosh hashana head right right so it's i don't really i don't really understand it you know it could I mean, be it could be, hundred, it could be the fact, anyone have ideas why it could be that it, if we if we go back to the idea that we shared that actually uh a big, another way of looking at the year beginning is at Pesach time, Pesach, at seven right, months right. back, right? right at the Pesach. beginning of, of, uh, of around the Jewish the people were of, of freed from Egypt, right, right? Right. So if you go halfway around the year from Pesach, okay, okay. now we'll go this way. You go halfway around the year from Pesach, okay, and then you have another half year back there. Because we're in Egypt, the top, and we go to here, and we go mm -hmm. back to Pesach. So. Oh. When we were just born as a nation, we were very uh, like babies. We were just like babies, and, and, and what are, what can baby do? They focus about them. They focus on themselves. Right, right, right. We were just like we wanted like watermelon redemption, we wanted, like, our own <laughs> development, our own passage through the desert. We could, but then as we go throughout the year, we reach a point that we can actually look at the whole world as a whole, as a, mm -hmm. as a, as, a, as a, like one big creation that we want to get close to God, and that's right. why it's the head, okay. it's the top. Oh, like the, the, like the, like you say, it's not like our foot. It's like yay, let's celebrate our foot. We're right. celebrating our head, and which that, has and wisdom and everything. Exactly. And with that, right. with that motion, we can go into into Yom Kippur and Sukkot, mm -hmm. which are about fixing and also and and being together with the entire world. Interesting. Hmm. The universal side. Of I think Judaism teaches us that our head is the neshama as well, right? Like the brain. 
which is interesting. Our neshama is our soul. So Judaism connects the brain with our soul, which is very interesting because we are talking animals. Animals bark. They communicate. But we are trying, we're talking wisdom and we're talking God's God's uh, spirituality and stuff that he teaches us. So, and we talk to connect to people. This is, we talk to connect, right? We're not like barking at each other. We do that too. Okay. But, <laughs> but, you know, um, right, right. The bear, what is that about? The bear? Right. To speak. To speak. There's something, what's that about? Like, there's something about human beings are, like, I know it's crazy, but a lot of people are vegan, which is fine. And we were also vegan for a while. Um, and then we, we realized that we're actually elevating meat on Shabbat. We elevate it by talking Torah, by talking spirituality, by talking, singing Shabbat songs. We're elevating the whole world on Shabbat on holy days. So it's very, the least thing is to talk which is interesting. And also I study sign language, so not really to talk. <laughs> you can communicate another way, but I feel like to bear. There's something about to bear. What is that about? It's so that word. Bears. Yes, no bears. Anyway, if anyone's celebrating Rosh Hashanah this year, type what you're uh, excited about and what's your favorite part. Is it the food? Is it the shofar? Is the it the long, prayer? Wonderful prayers. Yeah, it's very long prayers. <laughs> It's very, very special. Oh. Hi, Puerto Rico. Yo soy un poquito español. Um, so I was in Puerto Rico once, a couple of times with my family. I don't remember where. I was young, but it was beautiful. It was like, yeah, really beautiful. Your sister's there, right? Costa Rica? Was so, there. Yeah, yeah. His sister's traveling South America. The Jews like to travel. Israel, Israelis. They finish the army and they just like get out of here. We just like go to India, go everywhere. Anyway, hold on, to Texas. Oh, I'm so happy you guys like our videos. We're kind of weird right now. It's like late, but we just wanted to say Shana Tova. Um, okay, one more question that we can think about for the new year. Um, how could I be more compassionate and kind to myself and to people around me? Now I know that we can get stressed out, and the people around us closest. Are the, are the ones who get stressed about, right? <laughs> you don't really get stressed with the homeless man on the street. I mean, it's like, hey, hi. Or your neighbor, hey, neighbor. You get stressed with the people close to you. So I would hope that um, I, I could could help being nice, more, nicer to people closest to me when I'm stressed. And the first person we have to be nice to if we get upset is ourselves, not really anyone else. We have to give ourselves compassion first. And then we can give other people compassion, you know? <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, I went to put Costa Rica, yeah. It was it was uh it was great. We went to the beach, something like that. Um yeah. Anyway, uh, how how one second, how how could you treat how could you be more think in the world in general, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I've been praying about it a lot. Mm -hmm. Um it's so easy to judge other people and to mm -hmm. speak badly about other people. It's, very, yeah. it's like it's, it's a great thing. Mostly when I notice when I'm talking to other people to uh, to allow like conversation that's like being negative about somebody else, about a third party. And, yeah. and I really, really, really want to work on that, not to not to participate in such conversations. I say just teach. What that, are we supposed to talk about? Can we give teach, advice? So I say just about? teach to... Um, let me just, just share this oh, idea. Yeah. I say just teach that you shouldn't judge anybody till you reach the point that right, where, right. where they're at. So, um, right, like, right, there right. could be somebody that's behaving in a way that's that's a bit obnoxious, but to try to think where, where would, how would I behave if I was in their position, or uh, what could be causing them to be this way? To try to find what's called the point of schut, what's the point of, of, of where they're, they're okay or where there's there's merit after all. And not to judge them. And when we judge other, this is something right, that's right, a big right, teaching right. for Rosh Hashanah because it's a day of judgment. When we judge other people favorably, and when we forgive, then God judges right. oh, us favorably gosh. and forgives. He emulates us, and that no, He wants right. us to be first of all uh, kind and forgiving, right, right, and then He's happy to do that for us. Actually, well. it's even deeper than that. If we're judging people, 
we're, we're, it's like our muscle. We like to judge, right? It's like our thing. We judge people. We judge ourselves. We judge everyone. Around. And we'll go to heaven when we're 120 years old, when we die, when we're really old and healthy and happy. We go to heaven. And what does God do? He goes, okay, time to judge your life. I have to judge my life, which means I've judged myself and people my whole life. And God is like, oh, my God. And then God asked me to judge my life. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to be the worst judger in the world. I judge people all the time. I don't know how to see good th things. You know what I mean? So we have to practice <laughs> seeing good things and judging people favorably so then we can judge ourselves favorably when the time comes because um, it's a really important aspect to have to see good in people and to see good in ourselves so we can um, create a good world. You know? Hag um, Treat others like you want to be treated. That's right. Yep. Yeah, it's hard because it's like hard but anyway <laughs> right. trying to think, trying to think. as you treat yourself so like Les said here um, if we learn to treat ourselves kindly then we can then right. learn in turn how to treat somebody else kindly right. that's, that's, that's also like a part time. of that there's some people that like that are very judgmental firstly of themselves and then it's hard for them to also be less judgmental towards others so yeah, when we all like uh, look at ourselves in a good eye and look at other people at a good eye and see like the best in, in other people, it, and you create a reality from the way that you speak about it, you see it. Rosh, Rosh, you can, Rosh Hashanah, you can, everything. You can look right. at something and really switch it around to the best. Right, right, amen. Right. Rabbi Akiva, was, uh, there's a famous story, he was walking with, he saw a fox running out of where the Kodesh HaKodeshim, the most the Holy of Holies was. And uh, all the other sages with him started crying their eyes out because of the destruction. And Rabbi Akiva started laughing. Oh, so yeah. they asked him, why are you, la are you laughing? So he in turn asked them, why are you crying? He said, well, we see the destruction. And he says, it says in the prophets that the temple will be rebuilt. Ah, so he so was able to see beyond the foxes. He was able to see beyond the destruction. So we should merit to be able to see the hardships and see how things work. Amen, amen. Um, uh, Lana says, act as if your father's watching you and you want to make him proud. Yeah, yeah. that's that's great. Um, yeah, I mean, as we could tell today, there's so many cameras everywhere. Everyone's watching us, so God is showing us. that He's like, it's like a, a parable that's happening every second, right? People can watch us right now. You're watching us right now in my home in Israel. Like, that's crazy. Like, <laughs> who would have thought? <laughs> Anyway, there's, I'm just going to go over real fast a couple mitzvahs that we do on Rosh Hashanah that God commands us to do. We talked about blowing shofar. We, we pray a lot, right? There's a lot of like prayers, a lot of praying, like hours and hours and hours of shul. Thank God. And it's then the most beautiful prayers. It's funny. God always commands us to eat, except Yom Kippur, which is coming up. <laughs> but then we'll eat before, right? So you don't starve yourself up. Yeah. Another thing is what's it called tashlich, tashlich, where you go in the water and and get sins away, which is interesting. Yeah, you go next to next to a bay of water, and there's a text that we say that's like to throw away our <laughs> right. And then there's the shofar. Did you mention? Yeah, yeah, yeah. shofar. That's the first one I mentioned. Right. Yom HaShofar. Mm -hmm. Is that what they call? No. Yom HaTruah. Yom HaTruah. It's yeah. also called the Yom of the Remembrance. Blast. It's right? a blast. It's a oh blast. yes, yeah. it's also the remembrance, which is right. interesting. Right. Yeah, all right. Um, we're gonna bid you all farewell yes, and right. uh, call it a night. So we have Koch to get ready to, for tomorrow for Rosh Hashanah. It's really lovely to, to see you all. Penny and Josh all. are here. Hello, hello. How are you guys doing? We're doing, uh, we were just gonna say Shana Tova for like five minutes and we're talking a little bit. But I uh, hope you guys are gonna do. Uh, hold on. Hi, Glenn. Hey, we're we're almost done. I mean, we're again, we're just gonna be here for a couple of minutes. <laughs> just like Shana Tova, but we're here a little longer. And um, I guess we're gonna sing another song. What, what song can we sing? One last song, and then okay. we'll call yeah, it yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you may I just no, 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 no. We gotta go see. We're actually going away for Rosh Hashanah. Yeah, right. we're not gonna be here, so we have to leave early. And uh, we're talking to you guys before we go. <laughs> right. Rosh Hashanah song. Hold on, Do you guys have a favorite Rosh Hashanah song? Let us let us know. I don't really know. I mean, I don't really know my Russian songs. Well, there's there's, there's a prayer that we sing. Uh, Rosh Hashanah is, is um, very centrally about co coronating God, so to speak. 
like saying he's a king. So there's uh, there's a famous uh, uh, line of Hashem Melech, Hashem Alach, Hashem oh, yeah, Melech, Hashem yeah, yeah, God yeah, yeah, is yeah. a king. God has been a king. He will, will always be. So we can sing that one. It's a really, really good song. And we can end it's a good live song. with this song. Okay, you're all welcome to join those who know it. There'll be a replay of this. <laughs> this is kind of weird. Okay. Hashem Melech. wanted to say hi we hope you guys are doing great you guys are amazing really like um I've to each and every one of you guys um denmark hey um judy we will yeah maybe we'll all be sealed in the book of life amen may we all feel alive may we all feel close to our loved ones and uh, doing things that make us happy and be connected to our creator which will give us life with God's help. Safe travels. Yes, we're driving a little bit. And with two kids in the car, is a bit crazy. So wish us luck. Hopefully they knock. Hopefully they sleep. <laughs> okay, guys. Shana Tova. Lila Tova, everybody. I meant Shana Tova. Lila Tova means good night to us. Oh, yeah. That's right. It's on the <laughs> outside of the planet. Shana Tova.